They all know what's right. We all know deep down what's true, what's more beneficial. We're just so tempted to give voice and credit and importance to those inner voices. And then we think that's acceptance and it would be suppress suppressive of us to not give that voice and not give that space. But the opposite is more often true. By not giving it space to rule your life, you're actually accepting it the way that it is. By not believing in it, by not letting it dictate you. You don't have to make it wrong, you just don't base your next choice on it. You base your next choice on what you know is true and right for you, not on what you feel. Don't base your decisions on feelings, emotional feelings. Base it on excitement and inspiration and activation, but not on emotional feelings, because then you're not using the emotional guidance system. If you're in an emotional state, which is almost always by definition negative, otherwise you wouldn't call it that, you would just be inspired. You would say, oh, I'm having so many distracting feelings right now. No, you'd be inspired and it'd be clear and it'd be obvious. So the positive emotions, if they even exist, would be inspiration, excitement, alignment, and so forth, harmony, peace, joy, bliss. So when we say, okay, we're in an emotional state and it's distracting me, we're giving it too much credit and we're not appreciating the guidance system in the emotions. Because what the guidance system is telling us by making us feel bad is like, that's not the way to think and go and be and pay your attention to. So if you continue to indulge it, that's not acceptance, that's indulgence. Acceptance of the true gift of that emotional state would be to not listen, to not let that dictate what you do next. To arise to a greater state of will that's in alignment with what you know is true. So learn in those states to act more on what you know and less on how you feel, less on your moods. And that will be very powerful because then you see, I am not this mood swing based physical hormonal meat suit with conditioned parental perspectives. No, I am the will that chooses to do what it needs to do or wants to do. That's true for it. So I am the free will. I'm not this blob of different conflicting energy. So by allowing it to be as it is, but not taking your cue from it and proceeding based on what you know, not based on what Shuruk feels and elevating your will to that level, you're changing your identity from Shuruk to the true self more and more. And this will give you greater power to change your reality and to align it to what's true for you. Nice. You don't have to listen to it, even if it's screaming in your face. It can be like, ha, 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 and you can just be like, you still know what you know. You still know what's the most honorable, desirable, service to others, holistic state to be in and think to do in that moment. You know. You don't have to doubt that because you're having sensations and feelings that feel very personal and close to you. Act on what you know, not on what you feel when you're in an emotional state. Because it's always trying to suck you down a downward spiral. And then you got to recover from it again. And it takes time. Yeah. And that's what annoys you after a while, but that's good because that matures you. It makes you discriminate and realize who you really are and who you are not. And once you know who you really are and you proceed according to that knowingness at the expense of whatever you might be feeling, now you're maturing and now you're taking back charge of who you are. You're taking your energies back into your true self. And that is acceptance of the non-self by letting it rage as it pleases, but it's not affecting your course or trajectory. That's what makes you a Navy SEAL. That's what makes you reliable. That's what makes you a trustworthy vessel of the Creator. It's not suppression of feelings. It's just not listening to them. Knowing that you're bigger than that and acting on what you know. Not getting so distracted and swamped out by simple emotions. They're only guiding you to do what you know anyway. That's why you're feeling bad. So don't take your cue from the feelings. Just let them be. Don't make it wrong, but don't listen. That's the way to accept these states. You can't love what you're not free from. So when you indulge in the emotional state, you're too engaged to, to love it into acceptance. You can't accept it. You have to deal with it. You have to change it. You have to fix it. You have to listen to it. That's not acceptance. That's indulgence. That's sticky. It's yucky. It's weak. It's not who you are. That's why it tires you out. That's why it becomes more and more distracting to you, more and more heavy, less and less favorable. That's your maturation process. You're literally stepping out of the shell of what's not you. To know that that's not who you are equals true acceptance of the non-self. Because now you're able to love it because you know you don't have to listen to it anymore. 
Because you're free of it, you can love it. When you're attached to it, you can't love it. You can't accept it. You may spend all your time worrying about it. That's not acceptance. It's more accepting to not spend your time worrying about it, ironically. And then you don't have to make it wrong anymore. If you're in it, it's always right or wrong, right or wrong. Uh, 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 uh. But if you're not in it, if you decide that's not who you are, now you can love it and accept it because you're not making it. And you don't have to make it wrong anymore because you know it's not who you are. That's the power of will and maturity and wisdom. And it's not suppressive. If done right, it's not suppression. You just stop caring about what, what's screaming in your face. You don't give it credit because you know it's not true. It's stability in the midst of confusion. It's clarity in the midst of confusion. It's true knowledge, it's conviction in the presence of doubt. You don't have to get rid of the doubt. You don't have to get rid of it. Just don't be entertained by it. Don't be entertainable. Don't be indulgible. Don't be temptable. Be tired of the addiction. It's a good sign, Shirk, that you're getting tired of that because that's not who you are. You know it. And so all that remains for you to do is decide that that's not who you are. Then you can let it be exactly as it. You can even look it straight in the face without indulging it. You can listen to all of its arguments without being swayed one bit. Because you know it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's not true. It's not true. It's not who you are. It's not who you are. It's not beneficial. It's not beneficial. It's just a temporary dream. It's just a temporary hallucination. It's just your mood swings. It's a hormonal imbalance. It's a consequence of conditioning and interfacing with the world that you thought was real. But while you're just present to it as awareness, knowing who you are, knowing that you're going to do what's most honorable anyway, then you're free of it and you can just totally allow it to be as it is. And it will quiet down very quickly that way without suppression. So don't fight it, just don't identify with it. And don't let it dictate your actions. Do what you know you need to do. It's very powerful, just that thing alone. Aside from everything I just said, like the metaphysics of it, if anyone can just commit to what they know they need to do right now next, what they know is the highest. If you just commit to that, no matter how you feel, you're taking back control of your true energy. You're regaining your will and you become less and less a victim of the human meat suit, which is nothing but a perception and awareness anyway. So, And then okay. you, you also feel better that way. Like very quickly you feel better. Let's say you wake up and you're in some kind of a mood and it's kind of turbulent and like blah, mucky and like murky. You can spend like half a day or a whole day or five days or five weeks in that state, like just regurgitating it, like feeling it, like making it important and significant and not knowing what to do with it. But if the moment you notice it, you're like, cool, okay, I'm for whatever reason, I'm in a weird murky hormonal state, maybe my period is coming or whatever, then you, and if in that moment you decide to not let it define what you're going to do that day, and you're going to commit to what you know you wanted to go do anyway, and you just do that, it takes minutes, usually, maybe hours most. If you just stay true, to what you know is most honorable, most aligned to actually do. You know, not what you feel and think, what you know, okay? What you know is true. You commit to that, stay honorable, one step, another step, another step, another step before you know it, you feel empowered again, you feel clear again. It's like the brain fog and the emotional gut fog, they just disappeared. You just cut through it with your willpower, with knowing what's truthful for you. And that realigns your energies. And then these emotional states, they will reharmonize according to your will. And then the service to self influences that might have also attempted you from not doing your work on this planet, they will also disappear because they can't reach you anymore because you're not indulging in these states. You're not convinced, you're not entertained. You know, you're gonna stay true to what you know is highest. And then when it clears, you have the benefit of feeling again that it is exciting to you. But if you're in the emotional mood state, it may look like, oh, it's not exciting. But you know it is. You know it is the highest to proceed. And then when you do proceed and you become impervious to the distractions, now all that energy will whoom, harmonize itself, line back up. You seal your gaps. Service to self cannot influence you. Psychic interference does not bother you. You stay true. You stay true. A few steps, a few steps, a few steps before you know it, an hour or a few minutes. Your energy is realigned, you feel back into your power, and now the thing that seemed so like, oh, I don't want to do that right now, I don't feel like, it seems exciting again, it lights you up, you feel back in alignment, and so forth. That's the power of will.